Hi, this is David with the Enzo Training System. Uh, today I would like to address a common uh, remark, and that would be that the markets are uh, random and unpredictable. Of course, I don't think that uh, they are unpredictable. As far as randomness goes, uh, yes, there is a randomness in the market. Um, markets are a random phenomenon, are a natural phenomenon, and therefore uh, there is going to be uh, some level of randomness. And I should specify here that randomness is really just a matter of uh, observation. Uh, what is random to an observer may not be random to another observer. It's really uh, dependent on the, the level of knowledge of that uh, that observer has and how that observer can uh, somewhat build uh, uh, cause and effect uh, correlation between uh, uh, data, sequence of data, or uh, where it may come from or uh, not come from. So uh, markets, uh, they are a natural phenomenon uh, because uh, they're basically built by uh, humans, which are natural and uh, or whether that's humans or perhaps algorithms built uh, by humans and uh, the way they evolve, it's really the, the game of, uh, of trading is that of uh, at any given time, uh, finding the best possible uh, price, whether one is trying to buy or uh, sell an asset. And uh, this is a progressive uh, movement, meaning that uh, um, uh, those that are uh, trading they will uh, uh, settle for uh, uh, smaller and smaller uh, concessions towards the ideal price that they may want and uh, this helps to uh, build uh, uh, time series uh, an evolution of price that uh, uh, moves uh, somewhat uh, randomly uh, more erratically at uh, higher frequencies uh, but uh, it's more clearly defined at uh, lower frequencies and here I would like to mention uh, Benoit Mandelbrot, which is a, a famous uh, mathematician, especially if you're uh, into computer graphics. Uh, he popularized uh, uh, fractals and uh, that are being used uh, for uh, graphics applications. But um, uh, more, interesting, more interestingly, in this case, uh, in 1968, uh, uh, he came up with the paper uh, that uh, kind of evolved on the Brownian motion, or the concept of Brownian motion, and um, and they introduced the concept of the fractional Brownian motion. Uh, I guess the the main points of the paper are really that uh, uh, there is a uh, is theorized that uh, a signal uh, a random walk can be uh, established uh, uh, with a, as a series of uh, interdependent. Uh, uh, interdependent uh, movements and also uh, there was the introduction of uh, the Hurst exponent uh, which is uh, used to uh, as a parameter to uh, to determine uh, what is the in brief basically the volatility of a certain signal and whether it's uh, a more or less uh, trendy or if it is uh, pos uh, trending in a positive or a negative way and so this uh, um, I guess uh, th this is a good uh, basis on which one uh, can uh, build the structure and somewhat uh, uh, build the simulation and uh, analyze the markets. So coming uh, from computer graphics and games, uh, of course, uh, as I uh, hear uh, fractals, I think of uh, a fractal landscape or uh, uh, procedural generation of uh, random phenomenon, uh, phenomena like uh, uh, clouds or anything, pretty much, uh, vegetation. Um, but uh, there is one thing really to consider, the fact that uh, um, random generation uh, using uh, procedural, uh, to, to generate procedural assets, uh, it's really uh, very much about uh, building interpolation of uh, known data. So in the case of when we're trying to build a terrain, uh, here I have an example that uh, it, it doesn't have randomness in it, but uh, it, it may as well be added. But the whole point is really that uh, there is a, a progressive refinement at a higher and higher uh, uh, level of detail. At, uh, at the higher level of detail, uh, when we introduce a, a subdivision, whether it's uh, regular or uh, driven by randomness, uh, uh, we have a, a, a smaller and smaller amplitude. And um, if we were to uh, so what, uh, reproduce uh, uh, possibly a known market that from lower resolution to a higher resolution, we could build something that uh, is somewhat uh, believable uh, using this technique. However, of course, this is not a prediction. This is only interpolation. It, it, does no, uh, it doesn't uh, uh, do any good to us if we're trying to uh, 
guess where the market is going to be. So there are a couple of uh, major applications that can uh, still be uh, used. And one would be to estim estimate the risk. So in this case here, I have uh, an example uh, that I take it from somewhere, uh, one like many, that um, it shows how one could build a simulation that can be used, uh, for example, to uh, estimate what's the risk, what's the, um, to which degree of confidence uh, a price is going to move uh, either on the upside or on the downside, uh, given a, a set of uh, uh, parameters. And uh, these parameters would be, I guess in this case, would be initial price and then the volatility of the market. So I guess one could uh, but, uh, but introduce uh, uh, volatility in whatever terms, uh, like a delta, or perhaps uh, uh, using the Hurst exponent. Uh, in any case, uh, I guess uh, this is a more realistic application of, uh, of uh, something that is fractal, uh, meaning that uh, something that is uh, as a randomness and uh, as a randomness uh, at a different uh, level of uh, different resolutions. Another application uh, would be that of uh, estimating uh, this uh, H, uh, the Hurst exponent, uh, which I uh, shown here in these examples. So the idea would be in a fractal landscape, one would uh, uh, use uh, select a certain uh, H value to have, uh, let's say, a terrain that is more or less uh, rough. Uh, but uh, uh, we can uh, do the opposite and uh, take, for example, a, a a terrain and then uh, uh, determine what's the uh, value of h and then uh, this will tell us uh, what is the roughness what is the volatility and uh, if it is uh, uh, positively or negatively uh, this uh, samples uh, are taken in a sequence they're uh, more positively or negatively uh, correlated this is something that i didn't really uh, research too much in practice myself i implemented something to uh, reverse to determine the value of h but again, as uh, often happens, uh, uh, how many samples does one use at which frequency makes the whole difference. And also there is a debate really on, on how this age can be determined. Uh, I guess uh, the, uh, yeah, there is not a concrete formula. It's really up to, in a sense, up to interpretation as far as I, under, I understood, as far as I've uh, seen from uh, uh, many uh, different implementations uh, that are out there. So I uh, guess, um, yeah, this is as far as uh, uh, fractal and goes. So when I, I wanted to mention this because uh, uh, fractals are very interesting. And uh, if you're in computer graphics, they're very intuitive, but uh, uh, they don't necessarily, uh, uh, the ability to generate a fractal doesn't necessarily uh, bring to uh, the ability to uh, use it to uh, the predictive uh, level. and. Uh, now, talking more in general about uh, predictability, uh, there are uh, a couple of things that I would like to mention, a couple of, uh, I guess, uh, common uh, uh, mistakes, uh, that uh, probably beginner mistakes, that uh, I think are worth uh, mentioning because it's definitely uh, stuff, uh, things that I've uh, stumbled on uh, myself and uh, uh, it would be better to avoid them. So I think in general, uh, there are, uh, Assuming that one has somewhat uh, built this ability to uh, predict uh, market to some degree. Uh, first, uh, we, uh, if we do that at the higher frequencies, let's say that uh, we're working, uh, we're hoping to predict uh, what the next minute or the next five or ten minutes uh, of the market uh, will be like. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, we have a uh, in, we have a basic issue, and that would be that uh, we need to keep in. Uh, Keep in mind that uh, uh, commission fees, they are going to be affecting very much uh, uh, the possible profit. And together with the commission fees, uh, also comes uh, the slippage. So that means that uh, if we were settling just for, uh, let's say that we have the ability actually to predict uh, the next uh, uh, the next uh, minute of uh, movement uh, with a pretty high degree, uh, the problem will be that uh, within one minute, uh, really the movement of the market is so small that probably uh, just the, the commission fee from uh, uh, purchasing and then selling again the asset, uh, there will be uh, more than uh, the profit itself that comes from uh, from uh, uh, the uh, orders. And then uh, with that comes also the slippage. So if uh, slippage means that if you're performing market orders, um, we'll get the price that will be uh, definitely not optimal because uh, uh, we aim at buying at, uh, at any given time at the perceived uh, uh, 
price level, but uh, the price level will move uh, uh, depending on the, the volume that uh, that is in the market, uh, uh, depending on the, how much offer there is at, uh, at the given price. And so the more we're trying uh, to uh, buy or sell, the, the more uh, the larger quantity of this asset that we're trying to move, uh, uh, the worse will be the price that we get. Uh, so this is in the case of the market orders, which are uh, for which the price it's really automatically uh, assigned uh, by the exchange uh, server. In the case of uh, limit orders, uh, one could set the price, and uh, but uh, then uh, instead of uh, getting uh, perhaps an, a favorable price, uh, simply the orders uh, is not completely filled if uh, if it is filled at all. So there is a, a, a slippage is still there. It, it just becomes more uh, explicit in the sense that uh, one has to build a system that somehow will uh, chase uh, uh, the price so that. Uh, uh, the order is um, uh, the the general order is uh, is going to be satisfied. So this is and uh, I mentioned this uh, first because uh, I think it's very common for uh, one that jumps in the uh, trading, especially algorithmic trading, right away. Uh, there is this idea that uh, to make a lot of uh, thousands of thousands of trades uh, each day, and uh, and you know the idea would be that uh, in so doing uh, there is a immediate uh, a feedback of what uh, what the ability of this algorithm uh, would be and also uh, i guess uh, immediate uh, satisfaction from it and so one could say uh, then uh, i will possibly move to a lower time frame let's say that uh, uh, there is this ability to predict at the daily level what would be the opening price and the closing price and um, uh, here there is a kind of a I don't know if it is the opposite problem, but there is a different uh, problem. And that would be that uh, assuming that uh, uh, one has, yes, indeed, the ability to have a certain degree of uh, uh, prediction, of reliability of prediction, uh, because the time frame is uh, much larger, there is going to be a larger movement of, uh, of price. And so if uh, one day, let's say on the, uh, the, uh, the ninth uh, of any given month, uh, there is indeed the ability to buy and sell at a higher price by the end of the day. In between, there, there may be a lot of uh, volatility, meaning that uh, uh, if there is a stop loss, the stop loss will be triggered. Or otherwise, uh, uh, one may have to, uh, one has uh, predetermined that there is a certain level of volatility in this market, and uh, uh, therefore, uh, one has to settle for this level of volatility, meaning that uh, there has to be a wider stop loss, and so the risk is higher, and there is uh, going to be um, there is going to be a less chance to use a higher uh, leverage. So, in a sense, it's conducive to less profit. And so, I guess uh, what's the solution? I mean, if uh, a certain uh, relatively high frequency of uh, of uh, data uh, may be uh, not enough to uh, build the profit uh, with trades and the uh, one that is uh, 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 at a much lower frequency uh, there is a uh, maybe obstacles such as uh, volatility uh, in, a, in volatility at the, perhaps a daily weekly or monthly basis uh, the solution is really uh, that one has to find the the right uh, somewhat uh, somehow uh, the right frequency on which uh, it makes sense to operate and this depends of course on the uh, the amount of data that one has uh, the ability to parse that data um, the volume of the market uh, and uh, the amount of uh, the commission fees and uh, so there is many variables in between and uh, uh, generally uh, it may not be a, the frequency of which uh, it makes more sense to operate to in order to get uh, uh, profit may not be the ideal one, but uh, it's important to understand uh, uh, where this prediction, uh, where this ability to predict uh, works, and uh, how it is actually uh, one is actually uh, able to profit from it. And connected to that, there is another thing that uh, I guess the last thing that I would like to mention, and that's um, let's say that uh, one has built a pretty good uh, indicator that is uh, as pretty good prediction, whether it's a neural network or whatever. Um, uh, one thing that needs to be considered, and I think that's a common problem that I noticed in uh, uh, published uh, research, uh, uh, not perhaps not very advanced research, but uh, nevertheless, stuff that has been published, 
uh, and that's that predictability uh, in itself needs to be uh, considered in a larger a larger context uh, because if let's say we have an indicator that is uh, applied uh, it, it's applicable uh, in order to predict the next movement, uh, we need to first find out uh, how far can you predict the movement. Uh, is it uh, going to predict in the order of uh, uh, minutes, uh, order of days or uh, hours? And so if we apply only once this, uh, let's say that we have a 70% uh, uh, confidence on this uh, magic indicator, and this would be really already very high uh, ability to predict. If we apply it once and uh, it works in the order of minutes, then, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, the movement is too small and uh, there is really no uh, benefit from it. And uh, perhaps we can apply it uh, in the order, in the larger term, in the order of days or uh, hours. But as we go for a longer, long, uh, longer terms to predict, uh, the prediction itself is going to be uh, naturally is going to be harder to make uh, because, of course, it's uh, uh, more into the future and uh, is subject to. Uh, more randomness and so uh, i guess the natural uh consequence from that the natural idea would be that uh, this predict uh, predictive uh, indicator is apl uh, applied uh, in a sequence so let's say that uh, if i can predict the next minute then why don't i apply it for 10 times i can predict the next uh, 10 minutes and so when i really find out that uh, uh, it's going down then i will uh, close my position or something to that degree the problem here is that uh, uh, if we have a 70% uh, degree of confidence, and again, this would be huge uh, on our uh, predictor, and we applied twice, so in a sequence, then we come down, we need to multiply those, uh, those odds, and it comes down to already to uh, less than 50% uh, confidence. And this, of course, uh, it gets worse and worse as we uh, want to build, uh, uh, we hope to build a, a, sequ a sequence of predictions. So I mentioned this because I myself uh, initially made uh, so something of this degree, not uh, as good. I think last I checked, it was maybe 60, 65% uh, uh, degree of confidence. And uh, as I was using as a, in a sequence, uh, somehow the, the algorithm that was solely based on this, it wouldn't uh, bring any uh, meaning, meaningful profit. Uh, you can definitely tell that, yes, there is a predictive value, but why uh, can't I make a profit from it and the reason is this uh, that uh, uh, this degree of confidence needs to be considered uh, in the context of, uh, of a larger sequence and again if it only even if it is just a sequence of, uh, of two uh, we already have a, a subpar uh, degree of confidence so I guess uh, yes that's it for me uh, I hope this went well uh, I wanted to do this uh, uh, video for a while I tried several times uh, but uh, hopefully this is it let's see if i'm satisfied with it and uh, yeah if you have any comments or questions uh, please let me know otherwise uh, have fun see you